Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. And today it's a tangent from one of our past videos. Recently we talked about The Flash, and well, mostly Captain Cold and Heat Wave, but that issue had a backup issue where Green Lantern, I'm pretty convinced, accidentally did shrooms. And in that video I mentioned that it was just like the time Captain America did meth, and a bunch of you went woo woo. Hold on, record scratch, Captain America did meth? Yes, yes he did. And I'm so glad you wanna hear about it because I wanna tell you about it. But it's going to be a journey. This is no one shot throwaway issue. This was an arc. This went on for seven issues. Issues number 372 to 378. This was of the 1968 Captain America run and was star studded. We had so many people in this. We had Captain America, obviously. We had Black Widow. We had Diamondback. We had Bullseye. We had the Kingpin. We had Daredevil. We had Crossbones. Just, yeah, that's just to name a few. There's even more. So it's going to be an adventure is what I'm saying. If you're always up for coming with me on an adventure, hit that like button. So this story is all over the place and we'll ask many questions, some of which it will just drop and many of which is just not capable of answering because, well, society hasn't answered them yet. This is Streets of Poison, written by Mark Grunewald and published in 1994, which looking back on how anti-drug discussions were handled when I was growing up is not surprising at all. I had to sit through so many classes that eventually just became the teacher rolling in the VCR and leaving the tape there to play. Just a bootleg pirated tape of nothing but PSAs on loop. Also that cartoon special that had every single cartoon. It was a giant crossover, which I watched many times, but not because it was about telling you not to do drugs. I was just interested in the crossover aspect. So big fail. But enough about 90s health class. It's cap time. Part one, city on ice. It's a pun because the drug is called ice. Double entendre. Sold on ice. Two titles. Okay. I'll take it. Cap is flying his custom sky cycle. Batteries not included. This is over New York when he spots somebody on the rooftops and assumes that they're peeping. So it's Captain America to the rescue because he handles all crimes, big and small. Peeping, that's a job for the Avengers. So he drops down and it's actually a crook. Boom slang. Who is Boom Slang? Well, it doesn't really matter because he gets gunned down by a gang on the next page, well, two pages later. And Cap's not here for it because as he says, senseless violence gets me mad. See, chasing villains over rooftops makes sense. Sensible violence, gangland violence, not sensible. So says Captain America. All this puts Cap in a mood. He takes out the gang members and takes Boomslang to the hospital. When he gets back to Avengers headquarters, he's asked to check on Fabian. Fabian is a former villain who's now turned kind of tech guy for the team. Oh, I'm sorry support crew. It's the 90s. Also, the Avengers will take anybody. This is proof. And it turns out that Fabian's not okay. Dun dun dun. He's on drugs. Specifically, ice. So Cap relieves him of duty and is setting him up with rehab when Fabian asks him, doesn't he get his powers from drugs? Don't you owe your very powers to a drug? Now, while to me there's a clear distinction between a super soldier serum and a street drug, this sends Cap into a complete tailspin. Is he a man or a serum? He starts to worry, was the super soldier serum a precursor to steroids? And he all of a sudden starts to focus on America's drug problem. And he's got the finest 1994 stats. America has 5% of the world's population, but consumes 50% of the world's illicit drugs. Can this be so many people's American dream? Or is it a way to escape this American reality? That's a good question, Cap. I can't wait for this arc to not answer it. Meanwhile, Bullseye is breaking out of prison where he was deemed so dangerous that he couldn't have anything in the room. His mattress is strapped to the ground. He can't even have toilet paper on a roll. They're convinced he could kill a man with just the cardboard part of the toilet paper. I really want to see that happen now. How does one do that? As it stands, he knocks his own tooth out and uses that as a weapon to get out. Impressive. Bullseye don't play. Meanwhile, Caps decide that he's going to take on America's drug problem head on. Which leads him to one of the gang leaders who's called Napalm. Because of course he is. And he blows them up. You don't always need to live up to your name. Like, it's fine, really. This happened to be an ice supply house. Part two. Cap survives the explosion, but his allies have gathered because they're worried. Because super soldier or not, that's a pretty intense explosion. But he assures them that he's fine. Never better. Better than good, actually. And he kisses Diamondback. No, not the one from Luke Cage. Female Diamondback. A reformed villain and member of Cap's supporting character crew and minor love interest. Minor enough that when he kisses her, she's like, whose mans is this? I'm just trying to compete with Gwenpool in the hip department. I mean, I think when we do her next comic, I'll floss. That's what the kids like, right? Why am I so salty about 
this. Meanwhile, Bullseye has gotten work from Fisk, who's angry about the warehouse explosion because it was his warehouse, but not his drugs, which means that somebody's making a move on his turf, and he's not here for it. Part three, Cap is fighting Bullseye in a fight that started at the end of issue two, and is just cool, because you get to see these two go toe to toe. It's not your standard Bullseye matchup, but the fight is broken up by Diamondback, who Cap had ditched on his Sky Cycle, batteries not included, even though he knew that she didn't know how to drive it, so it's odd, out of character for Cap. Back at the compound, he berates Peggy for calling in Black Widow, because she thought that he would need backup, you know, post-exploding and all that. And he trips out at Diamondback for asking if the others think there's something off about him. Talking about me? Behind my back, eh? That's it. You're out of here. Right now. He seems fine. He continues to go rogue, just attacking people on a very low street level because he got mad because one of his allies asked him if they shouldn't be attacking the demand for it rather than the supply. And he's just, no, don't question, he's trying to deal with drugs, 1994 style. Mr. The name's Captain America, and I'm here with a public service announcement. Every time you buy drugs, you are financing murder. You know what this reminds me of? Robocop 2, when they reprogram him and he goes out in the streets tackling really minor crime. Not that these are necessarily minor crimes, but just the intensity of it, Robocop 2. Thank you for not smoking. So Diamondback by this point has figured it out. When the warehouse exploded, Cap took all of the ice. He just inhaled all of it. And instead of it not affecting him because of the super soldier serum, which would probably be the rationale now, it actually bonded with the super soldier serum, meaning that he is permanently high the entire time. He can't come down. He's just a mega high. He's tripping the light fantastic forever. Bond it to the blood. Next issue, 375, which also has my favorite cover. Cap goes wild with the really tiny caption and Daredevil's not happy about it. I like it because that makes it seem like that's how much he objects. Like he's just mildly put out like, um, excuse me, can you please stop harassing the people on the street? It would make me really happy. Me, Matt Murdock. I'm not mad, Cap. I'm just disappointed. Cap's still going off the deep end and he's breaking into a club looking for a dealer. And this delivers one of my favorite Cap ice moment. Ice Cap. One of my favorite ice cap moments. I do believe Mr. Jerkweed, that's the gangster's name, is what you might call a chicken. Okay, fine. I know how to coax him out of hiding. Here, cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> Can I get this scene in the MCU or just anywhere? Someone adapt this. Also, the panel before this, he called jeans dungarees. It's nice to know the cap's still out of touch. Finding Jerkweed eventually leads him to the Kingpin, so he can threaten him to knock off all the gang warfare. Outside, because the Kingpin lets him leave, he picks a fight with Daredevil, who showed up to ask him if he was okay, because the last time he saw him, he seemed pretty high strung, which he is. He's tripping out. And Cap at this point goes full paranoia, assuming that he's there to usurp his spot in the Avengers. He attacks him, his faith, just everything. Don't tell me, they want to make you the next Captain America. Next issue. Drugged Out Cap takes up less of this issue, which focuses on the gang stuff with Crossbones, who's working for Red Skull, who happens to be the person who's trying to muscle in on the Kingpin's drug trade. When we do cast back up with Cap, he's threatening some teens, telling them that if they want a kick, he'll give it to them. And I was just like, in the 90s, was it called a kick and not a hit? Did I miss this? Was I that out of the loop? Either way, you're getting threatened. Diamondback and Black Widow, who've been out looking for him, find him and engage him. And Black Widow accuses him of being sexist when they fight? Cause he says, get real ladies. Keep this up and somebody's gonna get real hurt. Hope that's ego talking and not sexism talking. It's probably the drugs and lots of sleep deprivation. He was really mean to Daredevil too. Cap on ice is mean, mean man. Anyway, Black Widow takes him out by shooting him point blank in the head. So, by the way, Cap can take a shot to the head. Really? That's pretty intense. His cowl is bulletproof? All of this is good to know. I hope villains are taking notes. Next issue. Bullseye takes out a robotic copy of the Red Skull and fights Crossbones, but enough of that coolness back to Cap. Cap's laid out on a table and they've called Hank Pym because for some reason he's the only one who can do anything about this. We need a doctor and we know several, but call Hank. He's here to see if they can flush the drugs out of his system. He has no brain damage, which the doctor tells us, even though he's unconscious. Sure, Jan. 
he's fine. Bullet to the head. Steve then proceeds to have really intense hallucinations, and actually these scenes are really credible. They stem from his insecurity about the idea that he can't be Captain America without the serum, that that's all he is. And now he thinks of the serum as a drug and nothing else. It's actually really poignant, and it speaks with genuine vulnerability with the character. And it also plays into a critique that critics did have for him, that he was boring. And the only thing that made him interesting was the serum. The super soldier serum has been duplicated. Other people have taken variants of it, and none of them have become what I've become. Why? Captain America is unique, you grinning ghoul. I'm more than a pumped up super soldier. I'm a man who believes in something. I believe in freedom. I believe that everyone should be free to achieve their full potential, become the best person they can, fulfill their American dream. My American dream is to help make this country the kind of place where that's possible. My American dream is to inspire by example, to enable everyone else's American dream. Drugs have nothing to do with that. There's a lot to unpack there and your mileage may vary, but it's all very heartfelt and very earnest. And it's a strong moment for Cap regardless of how you feel about his speech. This issue comes back to the first one with Cap worrying that he's inspiring drug use and that he wants to make a change and a positive one. But enough about that. Hank Pym, who the comic instantly drew to look almost exactly like Steve, has a solution. They have to remove all of Steve's blood, and that's the only way they can separate the ice from it. They gotta put it through a filter. However, he's concerned that that's gonna take away the serum as well because the drug is bonded to it. So they need to do a full transfusion. Take it out, put new blood in. You're telling me all they had to do was bleed him out? Lame. Then there's this very dramatic, in order to save Steve Rogers, we may need to kill Captain America. And then the next page, they've just done it, and he's just sitting in the room serumless, contemplating that. It's just a big buildup for it to just be done. But he's still muscular, which they're quick to point out is because he earned those muscles. I earned mine by doing nothing. <laughs> Cap now decides it's time to get involved with all the gangland warfare going on. This plot is coming to a head in a baseball stadium, because of course it is. The Red Skull and Kingpin are having a face-to-face -face meeting, which was a big deal. These two didn't meet often. Steve Steve runs off to prove that he's still Captain America even without the serum. To which I say, of course you are, Steve. You're just a less effective one, and one who's probably gonna get more hurt, and one who definitely cannot take a bullet to the head. Last issue. Kingpin and Red Skull decided that the only way to settle their turf war is to have a shirtless fight kung fu, not kung fu, just regular fight, I guess. This is after Red Skull detailed that he sells drugs because he wants to weaken the fabric of American society and bring the country to its knees, while Kingpin is doing it because he views drug users as weak and wants to separate separate the wheat from the chaff. Shirtless villain fight! Also pantless, but not underwearless. No. Comics code. Meanwhile, Cap fights Crossbones and wins a big boost in confidence for his self-esteem by beating him. And Fisk beats the Red Skull by crushing him. All is right with the world. He also threatens to blind him by gouging his eyes out. It gets real intense. Both of these fights are pretty cool, and they better be because they take up the whole issue. Red Skull airlifts out and takes his ice with him. Kingpin leaves because he can't really be arrested because, well, they didn't really do anything that they can arrest them for. Villains can have shirtless fights and baseball diamonds. It's okay. Also, Pim shows up to go, good news, everyone. He's found a way to separate the ice from the serum so Cap can have his blood back and have his powers back. But Cap decides that no, he's gonna be serumless Captain America. However, do you notice that they've already written their out in? There was no way they're gonna leave him serumless forever. Hank Pym following him around with a bag of blood. Are you ready to have it back yet, Cap? So, what did we learn? Well, we learned that Cap shouldn't do math because he's mean. Cap's got a lot of rage. Also, that this arc had much more interesting parts than Cap on meth. I actually enjoyed the parts like Cliff Note over a lot more. So the actual villain turf war drug battle thing, you know, the poison in the streets. It's definitely an exciting arc, but it poses some big questions that it can't really answer. You're just left to ponder, which I guess is way better than your standard PSA that sits you down to yell at you. But Cap is left with absolutely no idea what to do about street level drugs, and he's still pondering whether the serum is a drug. It's kind of left up to you how you feel about it. Yes, this brings up Cap's insecurities, but it doesn't really say anything hard hitting about them. It just kind of brings them up. But still, good to know the more you know. Whatever your thoughts, We'll always have Captain America clucking like a chicken. So there you have it. It was a journey. It's also collected in trade if you want to read all of it because I did skim over a lot and it also continues on with some stuff that happened after, but it doesn't really have the same zeal or zing as Poison in the Streets. In my opinion, mileage varies. How do you feel about Ice Cap? Let me know down below. Is it what you expected? Did all your dreams come true? I'm Sasha and thanks so much for watching Casually Comics. Please do all of the YouTube things. Like, share, 
comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.